Hi, today we are going to be learning how to create a treescape scene such as this one here. The really difficult thing about this is you are not painting the trees, you are painting the space around the trees. So you are painting the negative space. That's all the space in between the trees. This project turns out really good if you follow the directions completely, waiting for each layer to dry. Um, it is slightly time consuming because you have to wait for layers to dry and you have to be very patient when you're painting around your tree shapes in order to get um, what this kind of result that you're looking for here. So to start off, to start off right away, I'm going to use a flat wide brush and I'm going to create a very light wash. And to create the effect that I have in that painting I just showed you, I always start with a variation of the three primary colors. So I'm going to start with um, using this little paint palette by Koi. I'm going to start with a, a yellow ochre, very lightly. I'm going to come blend that out in a second too. And Let's see, I think a little bit of this red, very lightly. Now remember, yet red and yellow makes orange. And red and blue makes purple. But yellow and yellow and blue makes green. So you can use these three primary colors and have them blend into each other for this background space. What's something that you want to remember, you want it, I use a lot of water when I do this, so it takes forever for mine to dry, but you want to evenly disperse out the colors. I'm dropping paintbrushes on the floor. So that you have a little bit of red in places, a little bit of blue. I have blue here and here, I need a little bit in the corner like that. I'm just going to use a little bit of water to move it around. Move around. And now I'm going to let that dry and show you the next step. Okay, for this next step, you are going to draw your first tree. Now I suggest going on the internet and researching some different basic shapes of trees. Here I have printed off a few different silhouettes, um, like a, a tree in the winter, I like this umbrella type tree, what's going on here, the shape here. Uh, very much more simplified, almost um, cartoonish looking tree and a very cool shaped tree, like from the African safari, but that's pretty complicated with all these spaces in between. So is something like this. So you can create a more simplified version, sketch out a few ideas for yourself, uh, whatever piques your interest. So here, if you can see, hopefully, you can see I um, lightly sketched in my first tree. I made it more interesting and I put some jagged edges for what would be leaves and made some grass edges down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to take my round brush and I'm going to pick um, a color. So why I did the primary colors in the background. Remember you can do, well excuse me, you can make every color in the rainbow using just the primary colors. So by starting with that, you can go anywhere with them. Um, so you're not painting this, this stays exactly as it is. It's lighter. And I'm actually gonna start with some of that red again. And I'm just gonna pet, paint wet on dry. It's very, very, very bright. I'm gonna water that down a lot because that's too dark for what I want for right now. You want this layer to be just a few shades darker than what you started with because you want to gradually build up the values, gradually build up the darkness. I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow. These Koi paints are very highly pigmented and they're beautiful. So, as you can see, I'm painting 
the space around the tree. And by doing this, painting the negative space and creating the illusion of a tree. I'm just gonna soften that edge because I'm gonna work on the other side so I can show you quickly. I'm also going to do yellows and reds on this side. Really, I suppose you could get this wet first, this whole area wet first and do a wet on wet. Just carefully painting around the shapes we've created. Remember, red and yellow makes orange. So this yellow ochre color is a very soft yellow. It creates great tones and shades of orange. So if I've got a color going on here, I gotta get it going over in other places too. So, I dropped my other paintbrush. I'm gonna use a much smaller round brush. I'm gonna get it wet and I'm actually just gonna do a wet on wet here. I'm gonna paint in water and then bring in a little bit of color. Actually pull in some color from that's wet over here. to keep it cohesive. Little tiny bit of red. Little tiny bit more. There. Okay, so by painting the space around the tree, I have created the illusion of a tree. How cool is that? So I'm gonna continue painting on this other side, doing wet on wet and bring some more blues back in to the painting, as that gives it variety. Now you just wanna be careful because blue and orange make brown. So once you start mixing your secondary colors, things can start to get muddy fast. So you need to wait for your layers to dry and gradually add. Okay, so for this layer, we are now going to paint the second layer of trees that goes further back. In this case, we're looking into a forest, and as we're looking into it, the layers get darker as they go back um, because of the shadows and everything else that we're making it do. So if you can see, I'm going to try to zoom in on this. You can see I drew a second set of trees with the ground higher up because you've got to show distance, so you need to show that your layers are going back and the trees are smaller and the canopy comes down, the canopy of the trees. So land goes up, trees get narrower, and their canopy, their leaves come down. So remember that when you're sketching them in because that's very important. So now I'm going to do the same thing like I did last time. I'm going to paint the space around the trees. This time I'm painting around all of them and I'm gonna keep adding and building different layers. So I think I'm gonna start adding blues on top of my reds and yellows here, and then start adding more yellows on top of my blues. So go ahead and just watch while I get this done.
Okay, so after a tape mishap, that blue tape I was using did not stick. It kept coming up. You can see where it bled underneath. That's super frustrating. But anyway, um, this is looking pretty good. This is I'm getting to where I like it. I have at least one layer left to do. And so if I can see, you can see I sketched in my other trees in the background. I've got one here. One here, 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 here. So I have five. And I'm going to paint around all those. And now I'm going to start bringing in purples. And um, I don't think I'm going to add any greens. Green never really came out in this one as I was doing it. And you will see what colors you end up bringing out while you're painting your painting. Uh, for each person, it's going to be different. Because it's what colors you're drawn to while you're painting. So you can see um, the color palette that I got going on here. And we'll see what happens from here. But you understand that the next concept is to paint around all of these trees again, right? You're not painting in anything but the negative space. And that's the really fun, complicated thing about this project is learning to paint around your objects. So in this case, trees. We're painting around for negative space. So follow along and I'm... Oh. to show you that I've got my reds and my blues I just keep mixing back and forth in my pan and they kind of this side section going from these purples to this more red violet instead of blue violets more red violets to try to play against the complements what looks nice next to each other so if you remember that uh, complements are cross each other on the color wheel. We have purple and yellow, blue and orange, red and green. That's why these pieces tend to be really successful is because you end up having the darker secondary colors up against the lighter primary colors playing off of their complements. I'm just going to continue painting very carefully these tiny little spaces here I'm definitely going to do more red because if I mix a lot of purple on top that's Okay, so this, I'm actually, I've been second guessing because I really like this like this, but whenever I do these paintings, I almost always do four layers. So I'm going to show you how to do, get to this darkest point on here, because I want to show you. It's really hard to tell. I can't even zoom in on it. I drew these little guys in there little tiny ones because I still have to be able to see what I'm trying to paint around. So I'm going to do this to um, the best of my ability so I can show you without getting my head in the way and speed it up so that you can just see what it looks like what I'm doing. <laughs>
Okay, so this is basically the finished product. Um, I really like that I put in the even darker layer just to show you that there's just some trees that are just even further back in there. So hopefully you understand the concept of painting the negative space and how each layer is what gradually creates the the depth in this in these paintings. So you can see how we started off with that really, really light wash of the primary colors. And then we painted in around our first tree. And then that was that first layer that's visible there. Second layer, starting to add more pigment to the paint. Or how I paint as pigment. Well, you know what I mean. Starting adding more pigment and more paint around the trees and gradually building that darkness. So yours is going to look different than this. I hope it looks different than this because you're going to be drawn to what colors are naturally drawn to you out of the three primaries. And I tell you, each time I do this, I've done these dozens of times, They each time they have a different color scheme comes out. And that's the fun of it. So I hope you enjoy this project. Um, feel free to leave me any questions or ask me anything that you need. Um, because it's a little hard to wrap your brain around at first, but you get an excellent product in the end. Mm -hmm.